If you've never used this material before and you're not familiar with it, it is commonly referred to as EPS or XPS foam, which stands for Expanded Polystyrene Foam. It's a really dense but also easy to carve foam that is designed for home insulation. Uh, you can find it at hardware stores. It also comes in like a blue color with a slightly different texture to it, but it's the same. it works basically the same way. That glue you see me using is called EPS glue. It's designed specifically for this foam, but it actually kind of glues anything to anything really, really well, and it gets tacky quite quick and hardens and cures overnight. It's my favorite project glue. There is a link below to get the Bob Smith Industries version of the glue if you'd like to try it. This little doohookie is called a hot wire cutting table. This is a basic one that you can get at hotwirefoamfactory.com, but I have a link below to a uh, slightly more advanced version that's got some better stuff for it. Uh, this video was filmed over a year ago, and I've gotten some new tools since then, so you're seeing sort of a blast from the past in this video. And uh, a lot of these tools and materials, if you need them or need access to them, there are links below for you to get them, so if you want to try your hand at it, check out my links below. And stick around on the channel because we make stuff out of this stuff using this stuff all the time. This little doohookie is sort of a plunge cutter of sorts. It's a hot wire plunge cutter that you can use. Uh, this one works really good you can get them in different lengths and as you can see I used it to carve out a abnormal shape there to get that sort of cathedral-esque looking vaulted cut As you can see, I am using sheet cork or rolled up sheet cork, uh, designed for like cork boards and things like that. And I'm slicing it up and gluing it on with that same glue and holding it in place with sewing needle pins as the glue dries. This is an amazing thing to use for diorama detail, especially if you're doing brick or cinder block or basic masonry. This stuff works extremely well for that. And I see it used all the time by industry professionals to make stunning, stunning details as you see me doing here.
This next step is pretty messy. I'm using drywall spackle to fill in the cork and sort of smooth out a little bit of the detail as well as fill in all the gaps. This requires some patience and uh, a wet rag or wet paper towels to wipe off and a lot of scraping and tooth picking around small details like this architectural detail that I made out of one of my mother's buttons. I made a mold and cast it so that I could have uh, these cool little architectural details. Thanks mom for your button collection. I just straight up used square dowel rod uh, with some scrap pieces I had laying around to create a base for this side railing so that it would be nice and structurally sound. And that is me cutting some PVC slash expanded styrene sheet uh, and super gluing it in place to create extra detail. This stuff is amazing. If you can find it at a local plastic supplier, it will be much cheaper than trying to find it online. But if you need to find it online, there is links below to some thinner versions of this material so you can experiment with it and uh, get the feel for it. I recommend doing that if you've never used it before so that you don't blow a bunch of money and get angry. As you can see, this just requires a lot of layer building and adding detail over time and reassembling and assessing if more is needed or less is needed. This is a fluid process and it takes time. So uh, come up with a design and build on it and don't be afraid to be flexible with your design as well. is cut up vinyl flooring. Uh, there are some of these vinyl flooring patterns that are printed digitally onto sheets and then glued onto this material that you can cut up with a knife and glue down with the same glue I've been using the entire time. And uh, it sells the illusion of stonework really, really well. If you overuse it though, I found out it doesn't look so good. So if you use it sparingly and carefully in the right places, it turns out looking pretty nice. So it just takes practice like everything else. You'll find if you're doing diorama brickwork, layer work, tile work, concrete work, you'll end up using a lot of joint compound or spackling paste or something similar. There's, com there's proprietary products that companies make 
Uh, for most of my purposes, I find that general spackling paste, all-purpose spackling paste works just fine. And that's what I'm using to fill in the tile here, which I will later add paint and washes to to discolor and darken. You can do that before you lie it down too, but keep in mind you have to mix up a big batch to color match if you have to do multiple batches, and sometimes that's not great, so I usually do it all white and then just stain it afterwards on something like this. sheet expanded styrene sheet work just cutting trimming shaping cutting trimming shaping repeat 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 until I get bored and go home and crash and come back and do it again my goodness this thing took forever to build but it turned out good Just so you're aware, I'm using spray paint on these styrene and PVC parts because spray paint sticks well and does not melt this material. But if you're new to using the EPS and the XPS foam, it does not take spray paints because it has caustic materials in it that will melt the foam. So just keep that in mind if you do decide to use spray paint. Um, you need to use acrylic coatings or acrylic paint. Uh, multiple layers on your XPS or EPS foam before you even bother to try to use spray paint, but I would recommend steering away from it. This is me applying an acrylic wash that I just made from acrylic paint and water over the whole thing, spreading it on and wiping it off and spreading it on and wiping it off to my liking till I feel like it's grimed up enough to look like it's got city smog and rainwater and hard water and all that jazz so that it looks like it was, uh, you know, sitting in the middle of New York for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, plus or minus, give or take. No matter what you do, especially on a piece like this, there's always going to be touch-up. So I probably spent eight hours just touching up gold and green and teal and gold and teal and brown and gray and dark brown and espresso and gold and teal, just going back and forth to make sure all these lines looked uh, as sharp as I could get them to a reasonable standard.
So this is my sort of pre-final assembly just to make sure everything fits well and looks good together before I start adding a detail weathering. Um, everything's kind of painted and glued together at this point. Just making sure there's nothing I want to change before I get to that final layer of weathering detail. And there's me doing that. I created sort of a medium to dark brown wash and then I go back with uh, sort of a white gray wash to do a hard water layer. So we've got sort of a smog layer and a hard water layer. And you're just gonna have to experiment and do what you like and what seems right to you. Um, it's, I always mix up custom colors every time I do it. I don't stick with one. I, I like everything to be individually painted and detailed according to the piece that it is and not try to copy the same thing every, every single time. I like everything to be new. So that's kind of what it looks like under the in-studio, in-workshop lights. And you'll see what it looks like outside here shortly in the sunlight. Before we wrap, I want to give a special thanks to NECA for allowing me to build this bigature for them, as well as DGDX Official on Instagram, who shares my love of the history of special effects in film, especially stop motion animation and miniatures, and how they can be used to create fascinating little tiny worlds. It's been a pleasure working with all of you. Thank you so much. And if this is your first video you've watched of mine, please hit like and subscribe and stick around. We do live streams as often as we have time favorable for it. And we show you how to do these things in real time where you can ask questions with me live. So stick around, uh, check out my previous live streams playlist. Nothing is time sensitive. You can go back and watch anything and it's all relevant and hopefully fun and entertaining for everybody. Thanks for coming by the channel. If you watch this long, I appreciate it. And uh, I hope to see you in the future times.